I don't know why you came tonight. Some of us came with sicknesses in our bodies. Some of us came with all kinds of depression, demonic challenges. Some of us just came to press, koinonia, to press for more. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter what, what brought you. I like you to know that this is part of the experience. Every time we worship him, we're not just singing choruses. Hallelujah. is a response to a dimension of him. Hallelujah. I'd like you all to join me, sing just one song, and we'll look at the word of God. I want more of you. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, make it a real cry. The more I want to you mustn't sing the song. It's not compulsory to sing the song. Sing it out of revelation. Let that be the cry of every saint in this place. I want more of you. Yes, Lord, I've healed the sick. I've casted out devils. I've raised the dead. I want but I know more there is more. Teach me your way. Jesus, the more I know you. The more I know you. The more I want to do. The more I truly desire to know you. Lord touch me tonight I've not just come for a program please pray and say Lord touch me tonight teach me your ways show me something about your nature about your glory open up a window like my brother said cause my eyes to see something cause my eyes to see a reality in the kingdom help me sing more of you that's our cry. Koinonia is the place where we cry. More of you. in the spirit. Lord, I express
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome everybody. Hallelujah. Be seated in God's presence. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. equipping us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit no man is able to do this it's not a scientific act of wisdom you can't write textbooks on this when it comes to transformation and impartation there's no textbook you can only give people an idea of your experience it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to build men hallelujah Hebrews chapter 12 Lord, we truly love you. We truly love you. We truly respect you. We are a breed of men and women who mean business with you. Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read the first three words if you have King James almost all versions should be the same are you ready? one, two, read no, no, verse two, sorry verse two, one, two, read you people are all filled, come down I said the first three, how many what kind of, some versions are you're reading Amplified. Hebrews 12. Did I say Hebrews what? Verse 2. Just the first three words. Looking up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is it, is it on your Bible? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look up please. It's amazing how that many believers want to press into God. We want to be more like Him. And um, many believers want to grow. We want to step into dimensions. Hallelujah. But then, until you have a reference point. Are you following me now? Until you have a reference point. You will not know when you have become what you are pursuing. Hallelujah. Every time you are pursuing a thing, you must have a picture. So that when you get there or when you get whatever you are pursuing you will know you have arrived am i correct there are so many believers who want to know the lord but we've not taken out time to examine his life i've had very little teachings about the person jesus i've had different teachings about the anointing i've had different teachings about um growth spiritual growth and all of these things but how come we want to become like christ and we never get to talk about him the only time they talk about Jesus in meetings is crusades. And they just summarize him and say, alright, march to the front. Hallelujah. If, please appreciate the music director. Let me use this, sir. He's so smart. Hallelujah. Come on, I appreciate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if my goal is to become like him, Hallelujah. The more I see him, are you following me now? I look at his life 
and then I begin to see a need to conform my life to look like him I follow me now but if you do not see him you don't have an idea of what you are supposed to be changed into hallelujah so several believers in their honest and sincere pursuit for God are being changed into different things and what we are becoming does not look like the Jesus that we are trying to be so different teachings and revelations are molding us to become different things because the object our reference point we don't even know the kind of person we want to be like who is our standard the reference the Jesus we preach about so many things yet the central focus the one who we are supposed to be like we don't have an idea and so every kind of teaching forms us to become like a prophet an apostle a member of so and so ministry are you following me now a member of so and so denomination because you become like whoever is your reference point hallelujah if all you have to see is your pastor you become like him you'll be very fortunate if your pastor is like christ then you become like christ but if your pastor is not like christ hallelujah and it's important that in our attempt to press into the things of the spirit see the realm of the spirit is a very complicated realm you can become anything all you need to do is press you want to be a herbalist press the method is the same i mean the requirements are almost the same you want to learn how to still press you want to know satan more just press so as you press and say more of you you suddenly enter a strange realm and then you see many things that you can become like and it's important to scan through and several things will present pictures that represent success greatness achievement you've got to drive them away and say there's one i'm looking for give me a reference the word of god has painted a picture that is in my mind and you are nice but you don't look like the reference i can use you you can guide me but i do not see you being the reference you are a good leader but i do not see the reference in you and suddenly when the holy ghost helps you you say this is him when mary began to look for him they were looking around and when she found him she said rabboni she knew that he was the one are you following me now so the first question tonight is who are you pressing to become like because we have molded ourselves in different fashions that in our sincere quest to love god we found ourselves becoming many things hallelujah there is only one standard that's why i started by reading it says looking up to who joshua selman koinonia yourself your pastor no no I, I i believe in the place of spiritual guidance are you following me now but i'm teaching you that for maximum transformation this is the dynamics of real transformation let me tell you something friends the best of every man on this earth is still a man are you listening to me the best of every man is still a man looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith our reference point our gauge the true standard hallelujah you look up to jesus to know what success should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what progress should look like in the kingdom you look up to jesus to know what fulfillment should be jesus christ is perfect theology he's the expression of the full intention of the father for every man when he came and walked upon the earth the bible says the word became flesh god needed to give us a reference so that we would pattern our lives after that reference and so jesus walked upon the earth and he exhibited all the attributes we are trying to exhibit so if you want to be rich by the time you become a millionaire you look to jesus if what you have become doesn't look like who he is you followed another way and that means there's disaster are you following me now if you want to be anointed by the time you touch what you call anointing and it does not look like what you see in jesus christ then you know that you got something else
It says looking. It didn't say wishing or dreaming. Looking. Set your gaze unto Jesus as you press. It's a scene then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run. So Hebrews chapter 12 is talking about the race, the pressing. He said, but hold on. Paul had told them run. So many of them wanted to stand around and say, hold on. I need to let you know that as you are running and as you are pressing, let your gaze be on Jesus. So that you will know you can appreciate your progress. Are you following me now? You can know when, when you are truly looking out to Jesus, you will know whether you are growing or not. Hallelujah. Paul said, my little children, in whom I travel until Christ be formed in you. And so it's our greatest desire to be with him. Koinonia. And the Holy Spirit is here to guide us and help us. When we stay in his presence, then we become like him. And then when we become like him, we are empowered to reveal him in our world. Emmanuel Emmanuel Your name is called Your name is called Emmanuel So it's our desire in this place that as God equips us for the glorious destiny he has for us as he equips us to represent him it's paramount that we understand that our goal is to be like Jesus the Bible makes us to understand that the apostles when they met Peter and he spoke at the Jerusalem council. They looked at him. And they said. We know this guy. This is a, an ordinary fisherman. But he had been with Jesus so much. That he was like him. When they went to Antioch. The people saw them and said. Remember there was a man. Who behaved like this. He loved people just like these people are loving. He healed the sick. Remember that man that was crucified. Don't you see him being reproduced? There's a soup opera that many of you like about a man whose spirit entered another man. What do we call it? Second chance. His spirit entered another man and he started behaving like him. Is that correct? So when the spirit that was in Jesus comes and begins to find expression in you, men begin to see that the closest expression to the Jesus I can see is you. How come your love life looks so close to what I see in the world? How come your understanding is similar? Every time I read, see, if the people in your community read the Bible and they don't think about you, you don't look like Jesus. Because you should be the closest expression of everything they find. Colossians. Oh Lord, make us more like you. It's our desire. Make us more like you. Are you ready? Tonight the Lord is going to be walking on us very briefly. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to be walking on every one of us. God is building us, radically pruning us, and bringing us to points where we truly become competent ambassadors 
to represent his government our goal is not just to get ourselves spiritually enlightened nobody has received an award for reading genesis to revelation nobody has received an award for criming scriptures from genesis to revelation all those who have been loved by god are those who have dared to make the word of god seated in their spirits so much that they become like him church history is full of men and women who were the representation of jesus in their generation hallelujah colossians chapter 3 and i read verse 1 if you then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god verse 2 set your affections such a powerful if you're ever looking for a scripture that talks I, i'm not done i'm just stopping because the scripture is really touching me if you're ever looking for a scripture that addresses true christian character and the life the exemplary life of a believer you find it in colossians chapter 3 and 4. so for many of you who have been crying and say god walk upon my character two chapters for you colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 have revealed the highest manifestations of christian conduct set your affections on things above not on things of the earth that's what we call carnality that's what we call materialism setting your affections on things on the earth and not on things that are above where christ is seated verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory verse 5 now we begin mortify therefore your members listen look up i hope you know paul was not speaking to unbelievers hallelujah he wasn't speaking to unbelievers he was speaking to men and women who were going to shake the cities he said mortify deaden let's read on your members which are upon the earth then he says fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the sons of disobedience in the which ye once walked when ye lived in them but now put off all of this are you are you there tonight god is going to be walking upon us as i as i read the list i'll not be doing too much of talking let the word of god speak some things will be flogging you from this scripture it will rise out of this bible and hit you some are already hitting me as it hits you yield to that hitting tonight is not the night where you pretend as though it's touching your neighbor because i will share and then we'll raise a cry are you listening to me we want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness let me tell you the proof that you are truly christ-like is not when you heal the sick if you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a christian you are not a real christian that every time they see you you display at your default the attributes of the christ life there's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit come upon a truly yielded life full of character an expression of the fullness of what christ is did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your what you do on stage hallelujah there are certain people that respect you today and especially for we ministers not because of the sermon you preached you truly represented jesus at a very default state somewhere that you do not even know there are many of you that are treasured and held in high esteem not because you've healed any sick body hallelujah the man we call um the great evangelist billy graham it wasn't recorded that he had many manifestations of the spirit in his meeting if he had any at all 
we don't have records that he of course there will be pockets of miracles here and there but he didn't seem to in quote as we will put moving power you know have everybody lie down and say okay you know this and that but till today there's no president in america that doesn't go to pay homage whether he's a freemason whether he's born again what did that man show the world that compelled the united states of america to put it it was is almost a law there are certain people that seem to command the attention of their territories because they are the truest representation of christ has nothing to do with denomination has nothing to do with whether you are orthodox or pentecostal living faith cooking celestial church whatever it is that's not the issue hallelujah so let's read on this is koinonia we are becoming more like him hmm. are you there verse 8 put off all of these are you ready to hear the this now all right anger anger oh put off these dear ambassadors of the most high those who want to represent him put off all of this yes you are anointed yes you can heal the sick yes you are prosperous you are a multi-millionaire but put off this anger wrath malice come on anointed people malice hallelujah I hope you like this teaching tonight blasphemy filthy communications ha, look up channel O and MTV and all kinds of media programs have cultured the language of many people including believers and so it's true that you are born again you are serving in church you are anointed. I mean, all you need to do is blow the and you see people just moving around. But evil communication, your communication has made people question the anointing upon your life. And people say, I cannot reconcile what I see on stage with what I see around. I can't reconcile it. And the Bible says, so that this thing will not corrupt your being an ambassador, lay aside even filthy communication let's read on lie not to one another verse 9 ah! Nigerians lie not to one another businessmen lie not to one another prospective politicians lie not to one another those who are seeking favor from different people lie not to one another hallelujah seeing that you have put off the old man the bible calls all of these the attributes of who the old man and we have so many new creation people I have been crucified with christ hallelujah but when you are shouting new creation this is part of it you must embrace the entirety of it you can't embrace prosperity and wealth and anointing and power and charisma and then you refuse to embrace this because it wasn't written in the old testament for many of you who have a serious problem with the old testament there's a nice scripture centered around the new testament hallelujah a woman called an around tree we are trying to get her books so that we'll stock it in the library within the gates and the priestly bride i like studying on people who have been to heaven I love it we all love it because after the bible they are the closest that can say things that i like we have many noisemakers writing all kinds of books before they write the book they have calculated how much the profit is both upper limit and lower limit you do you really don't have a desire to bless the world and so we need did you notice that most if not all the people that go to heaven come back and write books free or audio I, I've, I've noticed this have you noticed that this is a trend when they come back to heaven they really don't even want to collect one naira 
I'm not saying you shouldn't let your ideas bless you. So somebody is writing books now. You say, ah, you have started with me. No, no, no. Write your book. We'll buy it. Hallelujah. But this woman was with Jesus Christ. I mean, literally. In supernatural encounter. We have a series that we'll be considering called Supernatural Encounters and we'll be playing some videos of men and women just like you and me who have walked some paths and realms where we're watching something uh, today in our house on a man who is transported by the spirit you know Philip's Airways many of you call it we have real men who are doing Philip's Airways not not imitation by our traditional people isn't that interesting and the guy said the Lord told him that a time will come we will need it hallelujah a time will come when they refuse to give us visas we say all right have a nice day i need to be at the airport in the next five minutes how about that if you don't believe this you can have a nice day honestly because this is we are training you to become this so if you have a problem with this mindset the lord is helping us in jesus name and this woman was with jesus christ throughout 2005 can you imagine throughout 2005 she was with jesus christ every day you know when i hear stories like this i feel ashamed of what i know that i call revelation because when they asked this woman i had to, I, I still have it i believe my laptop her interview with sidroth is supernatural and you know what this woman said when they asked her sidroth was asking and said why don't you love why did you ask him about power miracles the revival coming guess what she said she said i'm not interested ah joshua he stung me up me that have been pressing oh god reveal the seventh dimension of power here is a woman who has been with jesus for one solid years she has become so much like him that her priorities have radically changed if your priorities do not change in the presence of god you are not really changing hallelujah and now let me quote this woman she she said when she was in heaven she saw she entered a room and she saw the saints of old and the angels they were mapping out the strategy for the revival that is coming hallelujah so she was invited they invited several generals who pioneered the ancient revivals and were asking them what were some of the challenges why did some revivals get corrupted I follow me now and one of the issues that this woman raised was the issue of character many people corrupted these revivals hallelujah and so god is communicating to the entire fivefold ministry that while you are opening people up that's why we have miracle services we have time for impartation but as you receive the anointing on one side when you are about to run and say you see how much i'll make you in one month with this money as you're running god will hold your leg and say come back you have not finished reading it not too fast many of us are saying god give me this power and see all these millionaires people are suffering investment give me power but just one i know somebody that I can go and pray for a senator immediately is healed i'll tell him as you are healed collect uh, my bank account number hallelujah corruption and the man who is praising God suddenly begins to question you. How many of you have been to a meeting and after a nice and powerful sermon, they just begin to do funny things on stage that just kills your spirit? You were so blessed. I mean, these people represented Jesus Christ so much. And later on, you see somebody with Manasseh who just come and whisper something. I'll say, it's okay, I'll address that. And then as the air, I mean, celebrating miracles suddenly funny things begin to happen so i go and manipulate Jamfa, and i say Jamfa, just look straight there's one rich man there and because he has the gift of the prophetic it will work are you hearing me oh yes it will work let me tell you if we hold every one of you here i can tell you everything about your lives as the holy spirit grants grace that's the dangerous thing about the anointing hallelujah all we need to do is tear up the atmosphere and begin to pass mics around ourselves and you will see the accurate delivery of the word of god but what happens as i'm prophesying it you you follow this way and wait for me 
see let me tell you don't laugh about this the judgment of god is falling strong upon the church and god will prune and sanitize everything until we become a perfect bride a true bride that can represent him hallelujah and so a man gives a very pretty lady like this a wonderful word of knowledge you see the anointing walking and suddenly the remaining unrenewed part of his makeup just looks at her and ah now this lady is already kneeling down because he gave her a powerful word your name is gladys no, this i know her so it's not a word of knowledge hallelujah and i know you your father is and she says yes yes sir says ah you want to know more follow me you just leave and and then he says please tell me more about my life and then he says all right i'll give you time just get my number when are we truly going to represent christ in a manner that will compel the world to know that there is something about this christianity let me tell you if it's only miracles who used to change the world we are going to be in trouble because voodoo is warming up are you listening to me confucius you need to go to asia and then you'll be home you know all these manifestations we do and shout i tell you the truth they'll cross their legs and stare at you like this because when you go there to visit a man as you enter his room you see him hanging on the air have you had, have you gotten to that dimension i'm saying it will take more than the gifts of the spirit are you following me there's a place for that the world will see miracles hallelujah but i'm saying it takes more than that what if everybody in your environment is healed what else will you do how else will you represent christ we have so many men of god nice people but then later you go and you just bribe in the office it's on your table all kinds of evil activities happen and the bible is saying for you to be a true ambassador you must be there's no escaping there must be a thorough worship. Hallelujah. So that who you are on stage and before people is who you truly are in the secret. When you get to that point, you are truly, you are practically and experientially entered the dimension the Bible calls holiness. Hallelujah. Can I preach this please? And then we raise a cry and pray because it will not profit us completely if all we do is just worship him and give him all the praise and you know all of us because we are praying in the spirit and you know the wonderful thing about the things of god is that when you operate a particular law of the spirit you will get the results so as you pray in tongues and you are diligent studying the word what happens your spirit is being trained so you are anointed you come and stand and all you need to do is begin to pray in tongues and you see this dense presence of God but as that is happening what happens lack of character begins to arise that's why Paul said I keep my body this body is stubborn you must keep it part of your ministry is to keep it hallelujah let's read on lie not to one another seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new one, man which is renewed in the knowledge the word there is not renewed the word there is being renewed hallelujah in knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 12 put on look up the bible first told us what to put off you see the difference between jesus christ and our false prophets they tell you the problem but they never tell you the solution Say there's somebody what is the solution put off all of these things that do not give a true picture of who jesus christ is how many unbelievers have backslided because we have misrepresented christ in our social environment hallelujah I once took a boat with a pastor some years ago and we we're going somewhere for a crusade and i was chartering a car so i decided i told him come and let's ride together and while we we're riding we got somewhere 
and wanted to enter and um, they had blocked the place they needed us to turn and it would be a whole walk and when it was time to turn i mean the driver was about to turn and the security man said no the pastor just spoke through the mirror and conjured one lie ah i was i sat back in my mind i said god you know i love you i really love you when we finished he looked at me and then he smiled see the difference between an unbeliever and a believer is that when you trespass the principles of God, the Holy Ghost, you feel the check in you. When you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting Christ, you need a retreat. Quick. Quick. Whatever it is that you're doing, you need a radical retreat alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must be thoroughly washed. We want the power of the Holy Ghost we want the anointing many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you hear me brother if you're not thoroughly worked upon the anointing that comes on you can kill you you know we like anointing and you just pack it seed and say manasseh i need all the grace upon your life not so my brother not in this revival that is coming there are some things that you don't get by impartation you walk it by your diligence and intimacy with the holy ghost hallelujah let's read up quickly because i really want us to pray and understand there will soon be a program in the church put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved are you ready now tender mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness patience or long suffering he said for bearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you do what if any man has a quarrel ladies even as christ forgave you do what above all these things put on what love which is the bond of perfectness let the peace of god rule your hearts to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord the last verse and whatever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ giving thanks to god and the father by him there is need for us and let me tell you something this is what i love about the orthodox circle you see let me say something let's assume this is orthodox and this is pentecostal stroke charismatic are you following me now the orthodox circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true christian character and morality that's why some of us who came from the orthodox background before getting filled with the holy spirit the remnant of that training still remains in us I follow me now and so many orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing i follow me now at the ministry of the holy spirit and they argue about tongues argue about all of this and live under the law and do all kinds of things but one thing i can tell you is that in many orthodox circles when someone is sick the next 12 20 30 minutes you see people rushing to come and greet him you hardly find that in pentecostal circles we always like celebrating when you buy a new car we can come to your house but when somebody is dead ah you are not supposed to die who wants to identify that's why in many pentecostal circles when their members die they send them back to the mother church they say go and bury them but when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post what happens i am your pastor are you getting blessed ah it's a nice message the lord help us hallelujah and so both the pentecostals and the orthodox circles they are not wrong both of them are incomplete the revelations of christ are complementary not supplementary are you following me supplementary means you can replace one for another the holiness movement was not a wrong movement the word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement are you following me now 
the charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is, when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we'll find out that we're missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side. Manifestations of the spirit. Wheelchairs. And all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness. You still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity. A level of character and furnishment that the Spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. That's the reason why God is building us and equipping us. So that we are not only anointed, but we truly can represent Him. Have you seen some people you always, let me tell you. The more you become like Christ, the more you are well favored. Everyone wants to be around you. Hallelujah. Have you seen some people, every time they come around you, you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives. Or every time they come, you seem to respect them. You may be older than them, but there's a carriage of his presence. You see the character of the spirit. You do something they are supposed to swallow you up. And when you come, they tell you, it's all right. I can't pretend I'm not angry, but it's all right. And you're like, what kind of person is this? Until your life shocks your community such that they can say, what kind of person are you? Some years ago, the Holy Spirit asked me to draw a graph and write the fruit of the Spirit versus their manifestation in my life. And I was working in power, raw power. When I wrote it, I was, I was disappointed to the core. A lot of people say, Josh, you're a nice person. Oh, you are gentle, you are this. When I plotted that graph, I received grace to, I don't know if I tore the paper or not, but it stung my ego. Because I said, okay, God, so where is the ambassador? Hallelujah. I choose to represent him in his entirety. I choose to represent him. That the same testimony that is given about me on stage, should be the same testimony anywhere you know i i always share this and let me say it i was in a bus one time going to sabo hallelujah and in that bus there was an elderly woman then there was a the very little boy the conductor and he was shouting and just insulting everyone in the car you know you talk and you talk back and yell back and there was this elderly woman and i think she wanted them to reduce the price or something and this boy would not let this woman rest. He was just shouting and murmuring. And at a point, I got agitated in my spirit. I said, can you imagine this boy? This, is, this woman is old enough to be his grandmother. And he's shouting. And my old man wanted to just give this guy a dirty slap. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit put me in check. And then when it was time for me to pay the bus fare, he said, ah, uh, someone has paid. When I turned back, I saw one e and member. I said, God, thank you. You know how to cover. Cover for our weaknesses. We'll explain later on. How many of you have corrupted the things God is doing in your life by certain attributes? Don't tell me it does not matter. Are you listening to me? Don't let anybody preach any gospel to you that true Christian character and conformity to the Christ-like life does not matter. It does. Oh yes, it does. When you are truly conformed to the life of Christ, then you find out God can trust you. God can bring more ladies for you guys so that you counsel them because he knows that there will not be need for an emergency meeting in heaven. Hallelujah. God can bring money. God can bring money or something and trust you. And make you a millionaire. And know that there will not be an emergency meeting in heaven. 
trying to manage what you have become looking on to Jesus looking on to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith I call us tonight to a point where we begin to re-examine our character there are certain languages that should not be found among believers hallelujah and many of us use them carelessly and we are very happy about that immediately you finish using the words you say oh, Jerry, let's pray and someone is just looking at you and then you tell the person i think you need the baptism you say me if the baptism will make me like what i'm seeing i'm not interested hallelujah god is raising and training leaders you know why i'm saying this because god is going to be committing ministries into our hands god is going to be committing wealth to our hands there are many people that when god blesses today little financial prosperity everybody around you becomes a slave they must lick your leg and then we claim we are acknowledging god god is bringing us to a point where we truly let our lives become windows so on one side you heal the sick cast out devils and manifest the workings of the gifts of the spirit and then on another side men see you full of the christ-like life that they come and visit you when they bump into your house without invitation you will not need to arrange certain things i say where are these videos jerry yes, stay back then you just bring up any him there is need for the manifestation of the christ-like and let me tell you something there are two groups of people in this place those who say why did i come this night for this program i will be coming for a miracle service where there's no much preaching or those who say lord i contend for transformation i contend for transformation i i contend for transformation that's why many of you god has delayed you from running he has told you what he wants you to do you wonder why you are not ready on your mark set set has been for years when will go come when you hear this message and conform to it hallelujah as a lady everybody looks at you and they are seeing you very nice and pretty doing your hair and the guy just looks at you and says, these are the kind of church girls that look like indisciplined ladies so the guy sags his jeans misrepresenting his maker and bouncing and coming and then begins to smoke in front of you and speak nonsense and says oh queen now, really hallelujah he comes to you thinking you are so cheap and he can go away with you then when he comes you get two chairs and sit him down and begin to expound scriptures more perfectly by the end of that exposition you, you either say two things i repent or all right i'll see you later you say what of my number i said no thank you the true testimony of, about your life is not supposed to be heard among believers but unbelievers only unbelievers have the right to attest to the fact that you are living a christ-like life or not and as god gave me this message to prepare i felt like dying because i said god why do you give me messages that will flog me first on stage as i'm preaching right now i know the areas god is saying when you finish let's go and do our own finish your delivery how many of us have seen the need to cry unto god and say lord i need to conform i've been looking up to many things and i've been gauging my progress based on aberrations and things that are not christ but we must come to a point where we align hallelujah looking up to jesus the bible says put off malice bitterness don't say i was born like that all of us are like that in our family you step on my show i match you and give you a piece of my mind and go back to sleep that's how i am i'm that kind of person then you must change because the bible says therefore if any man is in christ he is a new creation but you must press that's why we worship him as you worship him you find out that the miracles you need in your life are not just bodily 
you need certain radical levels of transformation let me tell you something the more you are conforming to christ the more they want to make you a leader everywhere in your department in your faculty there are many of you who just see someone who will come and say sorry is there something i can do for you i want to help you wash your clothes you wonder why they are seeing something in you let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom presence as a gift and you will be a living carrier of his divine presence every time you step into a place there is something about your life demons will attest to the fact that you are a true ambassador unbelievers even if they don't get born again whenever you step into a place you dilute that atmosphere and they change their confession to accommodate your presence in that environment that when they are trying to bribe the moment you step in if it's for three hours you make every unbeliever uncomfortable in that place until you step out at that point men can truly see jesus in your life and it won't be too long one day they'll say what is it about your life i know it's not about your words i i see that you represent love come you love so much i thought you just used to fake it on stage but now i truly see that the love is in you how come you give so much i thought you're just trying to look for a name but i found out that is truly your nature how come you're so patient in a wicked world of impatience how come you're so tolerant these are the qualities that will make you anything in this life they have an attracting power they will compel anything to you a combination who will not want to be with a man who or a woman who loves who is patient who is tolerant we're discussing one day with Ejimi and he said something he said when competence meets humility is fearful when a man who is competent and then he decides to be humble it's very painful it will inconvenience everybody and it will set a compulsory standard because when you see people who are better than you and you see them walking in humility are you seeing why ministers are supposed to really be an example because when people look at your life they cannot deny the grace and the workings of the spirit then they see the humility of the spirit they see the love of the spirit they are compelled to follow you as you follow Christ. Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to cry. Tonight is that night when we are going to forgive all the people we have been holding for ages. Hello, father, mother, sister, brother, till I die. No, you, you will not die. But today you will let go. Are you following me now? Today is that day when you cry and say, Lord, this bitterness ends. I can't be looking at my brother. I'm anointed. Tonight is the night. We are going to raise a cry. And let me tell you something. Make this a real cry. That's
that's why we came tonight this is part of koinonia tonight we are going to be reaching certain conclusions and say lord forever my life will represent love forever my life when we have this we will stop having broken homes are you listening to me we will stop having all kinds of challenges in our companies in our ministries we need to be more like christ in the anointing and the manifestation of the spirit the same spirit that produces the outworkings of grace and power is the same spirit that brings in character rise up on your feet bless god for tonight's teaching the making of leaders the making of champions may be a hard message but it's part of the requirements to be a true ambassador go ahead and raise a cry for every one of us born of a woman in this place there is need to cry tonight beginning from myself there's something an attribute of the flesh that we need to lay aside and pick up something tonight is not the night to talk about anointing we are not talking about power we are all great men and women in this place unforgiveness bitterness all of these things that cripple the manifestations go ahead raise a cry raise a cry from your spirit we want to present a perfect portrait a perfect representation we want to be true ambassadors living epistles testimonies we want to let the world see Jesus in reality lost corruption all kinds of the workings of the flesh go ahead and raise a cry don't let the devil deceive you and say this does not concern you every ambassador in this place should raise a cry for the sake of his majesty for the sake of his glory make sure you're praying you're talking to the lord and say lord i have healed the sick many have seen manifestations of the spirit i can't deny that i'm anointed i can't deny that i'm gifted i can't deny it but something about my life keeps betraying your kingdom and tonight is that night i lay it aside draw me close to you that's a song of surrender tonight never let me go say lord i lay it i lay it all down i lay it all down again to hear you say that i'm your friend let this be a true confession from your spirit you are my desire no one has 
things and to love what he loves it's time for us to be governed by his passion not our desires hallelujah prayer point number one we're going to raise a cry for if you want you can pick up your bible and begin to pray all these attributes that do not represent the kingdom out of your life are you listening to me instrumentalists play your best class the symbol as we pray prayer point number one we are going to pray and say lord i lay aside lust enough is enough i lay aside lust once and for all by the spirit of god as you make that confession the ability of the spirit is there to help you i lay aside bitterness pride and arrogance I lay it aside. Don't let the devil condemn you. God will never condemn you. God will not condemn you. He's building you. Anytime you sense condemnation, cast it. It comes from Satan. Go ahead and cry. To be a real ambassador. Raise a cry. All over this building. Raise a cry in your spirit. Say, Lord, I repent. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Malice. Rage. Rebellious heart. Stubborn heart. What the things of God. Oh, we raise a cry. Aleke parata likeba. Rakata manarabas. Come on, pray. Brothers and sisters, you're before the God of heaven. Raise a cry. He knows your heart. He knows your weaknesses. And he's here to help you. He's not condemning you. There is grace to help you.
the Lord I choose the way As I said before you blessing and cursing I said before you life and death Of the Lord your neighbor we are going to be praying Galatians chapter 5 we need our world to see Jesus in his entirety in our lives we are not indisciplined people we love the Lord and we respect his government we have a king and we have a kingdom we have values and we live by those values Galatians chapter 5 I'll read it once as soon as I read it worshipers go ahead and just worship and we'll pray it but the fruit of the spirit in other words the fruit that the Holy Ghost manifests through a recreated human spirit is love joy peace long suffering not short suffering patience it's called gentleness gentleness don't tell me i was born that way gentleness goodness faith meekness self-control self-control anything cannot be yes any road is not the road self-control are you ready to pray and say lord as i step into new dimensions i want to see a rich manifestation of all of these things go ahead and begin to pray my life manifests the love go ahead and pray my life is a manifestation of the love of god the love of God, the love of God, the peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of God reigns in my heart. The peace of peace lives in me. The peace of peace lives in me. Oh, I'm patient. I'm patient. I cast out every impatience. I am patient. Make sure you are praying. Take this seriously. Don't look at your neighbor. Pray. I am gentle. In the name of Jesus. I am gentle. The workings of gentleness is manifested through my life. The goodness of the Lord manifested through my life the goodness of God make sure you are praying there's grace for you as you pray I'm faithful I am faithful I speak it into my life I am faithful in the name of Jesus I am meek humble in mind humble in heart in the name of the Lord Jesus, every seed of pride in me 
abide in you. He will neither be unfruitful. These things abide in you. Say, add to your faith, virtue, moral excellence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we attempt to round up, I'd like to invite as many of you who want to give your heart to the Lord. You've not made a decision for the Lord. It doesn't matter what you have done. The Lord loves you. Hallelujah. And for those of you who have at one time been really close to the Lord and you love His ways, but for some reason, pressures, distractions, or for whatever reason, you found yourself derailing obviously delivering please find your way to the front quickly quickly find your way to the front the lord is showing you mercy tonight don't think about it run leave your seat if you are still thinking about it go back to your seat for the way of the lord is the way of we is always a new beginning the law condemns religious people condemn and they make you feel bad they make you feel sorrowful they make it look like God is not love but I want to tell you tonight that God is love everyone who will come to him he will in no wise cast away we are a great family let no devil make you think there is no way today marks a new beginning I don't care what you have done no one condemns you the justifier of men is in the house tonight and with every sense of love with every sense of joy and welcome in our hearts we welcome you to a new beginning it doesn't matter how satan has taken advantage of your life there is love the bond of perfectness hallelujah I know some of you are standing here to make your decision for the Lord for the first time. Others, some of you are born again, you love God. You're just finding the struggles derailing from His path. I'd like you to pray after me and say, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I realize that you alone can help me. Lord, I declare that I receive your help tonight. I receive your help. Bring my life back again. Give me a new beginning. I'm willing to start again. I'm willing to be serious with you. Every condemnation and every guilt as a result of my past is hereby washed in the blood and I declare that I'm not the same man who came I'm a new person with a new start a new beginning in the name of Jesus father I pray for these ones our brothers and sisters thank you because you have drawn them we love them thank you because they have not just come on their own they responded to your call. Lord, I pray that as many of them who have had challenges and bitter pasts, let tonight be a fresh beginning. Therefore, I prophesy to you, remember not the, the former things, nor consider the things of old. Isaiah 43 from verse 18. Behold, the Lord does a new thing tonight. Behold, the Lord does a new thing. He will make ways in the wilderness for you streams in the desert 
a new beginning for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah now I'd like you to just um, you just take a walk the ushers will have a word with you to just have your details and a committee during the week will just meet with you and just follow you up hallelujah and we'll just talk with you and I truly believe that this decision you have made for the Lord will be the beginning of a great life everything you truly desire can be found in him hallelujah we appreciate you and we love you god bless you before you go i'd like a few of the ministers to come they'll be giving you a hug and imparting the love of god letting you know that we love you as soon as they give you a wonderful hug you can follow the ushers just a few three or four of you just come hug them and let them know you love them go ahead give them a wonderful fellowship love we love you in the name of jesus we receive you the love of christ is at work please as soon don't go back to your seat just follow the ushers this way appreciate them as they go motivate them let them know we love them go ahead a warm hug and impartation of love go ahead and appreciate them until every one of them leaves announcements and we'll be out of here hallelujah please sit down for a while god bless you just a few announcements and we'll be out of here um to let you know that there are buses available now please understand that the buses are limited are you following me the buses are limited it may not be able to accommodate everyone so as many of you who have the means to go back to your various destinations please you can go so that those who need to um come into the bus and utilize the opportunity to get to school or wherever they are going very very important and then um to remind us how many of you know that we are on with the bus project hallelujah we are on with the bus project for your seed your love gift we don't compel people we can encourage people the bible says let every man gives as he has purposed in his heart and we have agreed as a house to make commitments from five thousand naira and above as many of you have it up who had it or brought it here you can give the treasurer tosin wave your hands or any of the ministers or the heads of departments please and please let god bless you commit yourself even as you sow. hallelujah so diligently even if you've given give again you'll be glad to know that your seed is being utilized hallelujah and then i want to apologize for many of you who paid for the koinonia shirts and have not received them we really really apologize hallelujah the shirts are